Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to Kennewick First United Methodist Church. I'm so glad that you are able to join us in this virtual way as we uh, come together to uh, celebrate and worship together as the church. Uh, Whether you're gathered around a a kitchen table or in front of a a computer screen or in front of a television screen, uh, I'm so thankful that uh, you are able to join us this morning for a a very special uh, worship service. Today, we're going to be celebrating um, our high school seniors. Uh, A little bit later in the service, we're going to be able to hear from each of them and uh, hear their stories of what their connection to this congregation has meant to them and uh, how they've grown in their faith because they've been part of this church that we love. So thank you for joining us this morning. I'm so glad that you are here. Uh, Welcome to church, my friends. Good morning, everyone. We are so glad to have you joining us here today on this special Youth Sunday where we are going to honor our seniors who are graduating this year. Um, All of our songs that we have this service um, are picked by the seniors and have some special meaning to them. So I hope that you'll enjoy the songs that we have to sing this morning. And our first song that we're going to sing this morning is Revelation Song. Let's worship together. Thank you. 
Friends, every week when we gather together to worship together in the sanctuary, we take a few moments to to stand up from where we're sitting and make our way around the sanctuary, wish people good morning, and reconnect with people that we haven't seen for maybe a week or longer. But since we're not all gathered together in the sanctuary and we are meeting in a a virtual way today, I want to take a a, a moment to uh, give you a chance to reach out to somebody, wish them good morning, and in a sense, pass the peace of Christ to them. Take just a a moment or two and maybe send an email or a text message. If you want to pause this video and make a phone call with somebody just as a way to to remind them that you're thinking about them and that they are loved and thought about in times like this, um, take just a few moments to reach out and pass that peace of Christ to, uh, to someone that you care about in either a text message, an email, or a phone call. Well, each week uh, during these virtual worship services, I um, try to offer us an opening prayer that is maybe a a poem that has caught my interest or maybe a prayer that I've written as a way for us to focus on who we are and who it is that we are worshiping. Uh, This last week, Jim Detheridge sent me a link to a poet that he had discovered named Malcolm Geit. And Malcolm is a a chaplain at Cambridge University and has written several poems that are, are related to scripture. And I thought this poem that he sent me a link for uh, by Malcolm Geit, uh, named As If, uh, would be a, a good poem for us to hear, especially in times when we are rediscovering what it is to be followers of Jesus, and especially in times where we are having to live and connect differently what it is that God calls us to do and be. So this poem is based on Matthew 5.42 which reads, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. This is the poem As If by Malcolm Geit. The giver of all good gifts asks me to give, the fountain from which every good thing flows, the life who spins himself that all might live, the root whence every bud and blossom grows, calls me as if I knew no limitation as if I focused all his hidden force to be creative with his new creation, to find my flow in him, my living source, to live as if I had no fear of of losing, to spend as if I had no need to earn, to turn my cheek as if it felt no bruising, to lend as if I needed no return, as if my debts and my sins were all forgiven, as if I too could body forth his heaven. I want to thank you all for being so generous during this uh, unusual time where we can't meet in person and helping to support the the ministries of Kennewick First United Methodist Church. Uh, Because of your generosity, we've uh, been able to continue doing things like these virtual worship services and continue to to be able uh, to be the church that connects with one another, that shares the the love of Christ with one another, and continues to do the ministries we're called to do, uh, not only um, in this place, but in this community that we love. So thank you so much for for your generosity and supporting us. Um, If you're watching this video this morning, and maybe you uh, attend uh, another church, but uh, maybe they aren't able to to do um, uh, online worship services or or, um, things like that, uh, I, I want to encourage you to be able to support your local church and help them continue to do the ministries that each of us are called to do to make a difference in the world. Um, I just want to remind you that, that if you're one of those people that has been supporting the ministries of this church, uh, you can still mail in those donations uh, through the U.S. Postal Service. Or if you uh, would like to, you can go to our, our webpage at kennewickfirst.com and up in the, the top right corner, there's a little button up there that says Give. Uh, and you're able to make a donation there. And also, if, if you would like to, it's uh, even possible for you to make a donation via a text message on your phone by just texting Kennewick First to 77977. But again, thank you, friends, for your generosity and helping us to continue to be um, this church that God's called us to be.
we would like to dedicate this next song to our seniors. And it is our prayer that no matter where God takes you in the future, that you would be able to be the body of Christ to everyone you come in contact with. would you join me in a liturgy of prayer as we give thanks to God for the gifts that he's given to us and we ask for God's help in times of need and in times of trouble. Friends, would you join me in prayer? For the gifts of friendship, family, and communities of love. We give you thanks. We pray for those who feel lonely, isolated, and afraid. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders and medical personnel in harm's way to keep us safe. Lord, hear our prayer. For those dealing with health issues, illness, and disease. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local government officials in the Tri-Cities. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected officials and leaders of our state. Lord, 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our nation and other world leaders. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all of these things, Lord, as we pray that prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, my name is Ethan Nelson, and I'm going to be reading Psalm 66, 8 through 20. Uh, praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will build... I will offer bulls and goats. Come and hear, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21 reads, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show them myself to them. Well, today is a very special day as we gather together to uh, celebrate and worship. Uh, this church, along with many others, has a tradition of celebrating their high school seniors as they graduate from high school. And obviously, this year is very different than years in the past. Many uh, high school seniors are not going to be able to, to walk in cap and gown or uh, walk ac across the stage and uh, get their diploma. And for the last month or so, they've even been meeting uh, here at the church in new ways, either in virtual Zoom call meetings or uh, in other ways to stay connected, especially at an important time in their life. And so today, we're going to get a chance to... Uh, hear from our uh, seniors in high school as they uh, move through this milestone of life and move into a, a new stage of their growth and a new stage in their life. And so, uh, first of all, I want to thank Rachel Loomis, our uh, youth director. She's going to give you a, a little introduction and some thoughts, and then we're going to hear from some of our high school seniors uh, about their experience and what this congregation has meant to them uh, and their faith. So uh, I hope you enjoy this. I hope that this is a, a time for us to, to celebrate and to realize that as a congregation, we play a huge role, not only in the lives of the people who participate in this, uh, uh, this community, but in the lives of all the people that we touch. So let me hand it over to Rachel and then invite our seniors to, to share their thoughts and their um, their. Uh, memories with us. Good morning. My name is Rachel Loomis and I'm the youth director at Kenwick First United Methodist Church. I just wanted to let you know that I was very hesitant to uh, record this video for you because earlier this week I woke up to a swollen face. It was um, partially numb, mostly in pain, and it turns out I have an infection and I'm not allowed to wear my contacts or makeup, um, but it turns out I don't believe I'll have the opportunity to wear contacts or makeup. 
before Sunday at all. So um, I'm just going to go with it. And so that's why I look like this for you this morning, but that's okay. So traditionally, Kennewick First has honored their graduating seniors from the United Methodist Youth Program during Youth Sunday. It's a Sunday where the middle and the high schoolers have the opportunity to lead both the 9 a.m. and the 10.30 a.m. worship services in the sanctuary. This year, we've adapted Youth Sunday into Senior Sunday. And so today we have the opportunity to honor our seven graduating seniors. And those seniors are Michaela Bateman, Adam Berg, Arizona Kennedy, Ethan Nelson, Walker Tagaris, Daniel Thien, and Jasmine Urban. I had the pleasure of getting to know all seven of these seniors um, their freshman year. It was my first year volunteering as a youth group leader, actually. And I had been a volunteer youth group leader with the middle schoolers. And so Kayla, the youth director at the time, um, had us pretty separate as it, as it normally is, junior high leaders, senior high leaders. And so I didn't have the opportunity to get to know these seniors as freshmen because I was with the middle schoolers. But two weeks before the mission trip, Kayla got a hold of me and said, hey, I need another lady leader. Are you able to go? Can you can you work it out with your job? Blah, blah, blah. So I immediately um, was like, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna think about it. I'll let you know. Got to talk to my boss. Got to think about all these things, pray and all that stuff. So I ended up going with two weeks notice on this mission trip. We show up to the Pasco airport. Kayla handed me the plane tickets and said, hey, can you pass these out? Okay, well, I knew some names, not all the names. I'm not gonna lie, like, I didn't know everybody. So I was getting to know all the senior hires as we were flying to California for our mission trip. Um, but it didn't take long for me to get to know them and to see their hearts and their souls and their personalities just come through um, to shine everywhere. Oh, okay, sorry. So over that week, we had a wonderful week serving the Lord together, growing in our faith. We had a lot of fun on the beach and at Disneyland. And um, ever since then, you know, the, the, the several years since then, um, I've had the opportunity to get to know them in many different ways. And I have fond memories with each and every one of the seniors. Um, we've had some wonderful memories and they were, you know, with me through the transition of being a volunteer to, to becoming their youth director. And they were youth that I, I just look up to you guys. You guys are strong, you're kind, you're faith filled. And I just, I love you so much. Um, I miss you so much, and I am so sorry that um, your senior year of youth group, you know, kind of had to end like this um, on videos and trying to take videos over and over and over again um, and on Zoom and all of that. I'm sorry that your mission trip was canceled, but I am um, planning an alternative mission trip opportunity, and so we'll be letting you know and the congregation know as soon as that happens. But for this morning, um, we just want to give the seniors an opportunity to, to speak from their hearts, um, to share a message to you. So I look forward um, to you know, hearing what they have to say. And again, seniors, we just love you and we miss you and we just wish the best for you. God bless you guys.
Hi, my name is Michaela Bateman. I'm graduating this June from Kenwalk High, and then I'll be attending CBC to become a special ed teacher. Growing up, I never went to church, or I wasn't in a church family, per se, until I started coming here in third grade, where I met these amazing people who are graduating with me now. Um, this church and community has become a family of mine, and it's a place where I'm welcomed and I'm open to be myself in youth group. I am disappointed that I won't have a senior mission trip or a senior talk, but I'm okay being able to thank all of you and looking at the impact that you've all made through my life. Throughout all of our mission trips, my favorite one would have to be our sophomore year where all of us went to Portland, Oregon. Um, even though there were some bumps in the trip, it was an overall great time. My favorite part would have to be where we all went to the escape room and then laughed about how terribly we sucked at the escape room while eating Cheesecake Factory and Voodoo Donuts. Um, if you ask Cynthia or Jeff, my favorite, um, what they thought my favorite part would be, they would say when I got an hour-long nosebleed and almost had to go to the hospital. Um, I'm thankful for spending my last seven years in this youth group program with everyone and playing all the games together. I'll miss all of you dearly, even though I'll still be at the church technically. I would like to thank some people who have made the biggest impact in my life throughout the years that I've met them. First off, I want to thank Jim Dore and his wife for being a great for being great people. I they're the people who I go to for anything, and they have a great stories and just overall great personality. And I would miss them dearly if I never met them. I want to thank Rachel for being a great youth leader. I didn't know how great of a friendship we would have starting if if you asked me in my soft, my freshman year when I met you if we would be great friends. I wouldn't say yes, but now that you've become my youth leader, you've become one of my closest friends and a person I can go to all the time. I want to thank Jeff for being my favorite youth leader and will always be my favorite youth leader. Um... You've been here as a youth leader of mine since my sixth grade year, and you've always brought out my competitive side when playing games, but you're also an overall amazing person, and I'm glad that I was able to meet you. I would lastly like to thank two people who have made the biggest impact on my life starting here, which was Cynthia and Kayla. Cynthia has been in my life since my uncle was in this youth group program, and I can't thank her enough for welcoming me into her life and being by my family's side through everything. I'm thankful that she prays for me every day and my family. A little side story, I always laugh to think that my first youth group event was when I was actually eight instead of my sixth grade year because my uncle, when he was in this youth group program, had to choose between babysitting eight-year-old me or coming to a youth group, and Cynthia let him bring me to youth group, and so I got to experience youth group at eight, eight years old. Lastly, I want to thank Kayla. I knew from the start of joining, you would be like a big sister to me, be the sister I never got. And I'm so glad to be along with you through everything you've been through, whether it was you getting married and all of our mission trips together and seeing the the cute dogs that you have and the life that you get to live. And I'm thankful that you put me under your wing and keep checking on me, even though you live in North Dakota. Um, if it weren't for these amazing people and the overall church community. I don't know where I would be now, and I thank all of you for being there around me. Hi, I'm Adam Berg, and I'm a senior, and I would be graduating um, and walking across the stage this year, but right now I am coming to you from my kitchen, where we are filming this, uh, and I would just say that, you know, this is a strange time that we're all living in, and especially for us graduates, because we... Um, don't get all the parties that we or any any of it that we would have normally, and I mean for a lot of my for a lot of my friends and myself that has um, kind of hit hard for more people than others. Um, I'm doing okay with it. I don't need to hear all 400 names get called and sit there in an uncomfortable chair while one by one they march across the stage and shake at the principal's hand. Uh, but uh, as everything as in here in Washington as everything starts to reopen, um, it is I found that schools have been deemed non-essential, and we knew this all along. I've known this since I went to kindergarten. I don't know why I ever bothered and why they ever bothered. We could have just been doing this all along, but it took them this long to figure that out, and I'm glad they finally did.
I'm here to talk to you about um, my main memories in youth group and what that has meant to me um, as a person. And I think one of my fondest memories that I've had was um, the small group that we had in Colorado. Um, myself, um, Ethan, Daniel, Jeff, and Sean, we were all in a small group, and Ethan, Daniel, and I have grown up in this church together. Um, we did a lot of things, we went on every trip so far. We didn't, this year obviously it got canceled. Um, and so it was really cool to have that last year, which is the three of us and Jeff and Sean were some of our favorite leaders. And we spent most of that, our small group time, just hanging out. Like it wasn't, I mean, we, we did the Bible studies, but we mostly just hung out and got to know each other better and just said, what was the favorite part about your day? And like, we, while we read through the Bible verses, we didn't dive as deeply into it because I think we all felt like the connection that we had and just talking about what was important in the time um, was what we should do, especially um, not, I mean, now we know that, that it might have been our last mission trip, but we, at the time, didn't know that. And so looking back, I'm glad I had that opportunity to grow closer to those um, four other guys, and it really meant a lot being in that particular small group, given that we didn't get to choose, and it happened to be that us um, five got in that group together. Um, now, the other thing I'd like to talk, uh, another memory that I'd like to talk about, uh, when we went to LA, um, I remember this involves Daniel and Christian, and Jim is one of, Jim, our youth group leader, is one of the most prepared people I have ever met, strangely prepared for any um, eventuality. He had the means to test for strep throat in the bus. And I, I, I don't understand how you test for strep throat in a bus besides looking in, in someone's mouth. But he just, he did. And we were all oddly impressed. But this, this involves him and our uh, sink in our room. And he had brought um, this water filter because he was worried that the water might not be as filtered as... He would have liked that might be wrong i don't know you might hear a different story from jim but this is what christian daniel and i came up with is that he had this water filter and so we, we went to this magnificent um monastery in la and they had this um well that we were looking and then we were all well they're telling us about this well and where the water comes from you daniel christian and i just eyeballed each other like man where's jim and his water filter like what if we want to drink this water he doesn't have his water filter um, and so the whole entire trip, we kind of, um, joked around with him because he forgot to bring it, which is why it was funny. He was freaking out because of all the things he didn't bring, it was the water filter that was making him the most nervous. And we thought it was funny how, um, out of how prepared he always was that in an eventuality where people might get hurt or something that, that was the one thing that he, um, really, you know, was, it was really funny for us that he didn't bring that. Um, but continuing on, um, I would like to announce that I have chosen to go to the UW um, after lots of thought and deliberation and not choosing the Cougars for a whole bunch of reasons. I mean, maybe if you win the Apple Cup one of these years, you'll be there in my heart. But I have chosen to study uh, aquatic and fishery sciences at the UW. I'm hoping that's going to be really cool. Um, different branch for me. I've been much more into mathematics and sciences, and I'm hoping that um, it takes me a little bit different way, but I also like those types of sciences. And that's, those are my future plans, and um, thank you for letting me submit this wonderful video to whatever online service it's going to be in. Uh, and yeah, thanks for um, allowing me to spend my past 18 years or some at this church. It's been a real pleasure, and I can't wait to see what I have going on for me going forward and what you guys have going on forward. Thank you. Hey, my name is Ethan Nelson, and I couldn't really settle on just one uh, best senior moment for myself, so I'm going to talk broadly about several of the mission trips we went on. And the mission trips are really fun because we're able to help out while still acting all crazy. Uh, so some of the stuff that we did is in my first year, we went to a Dream Center, which is a, a organization that's designed to help people who are experiencing homelessness. So some of the stuff we did is we handed out hot dogs and after we ran out, we got to play soccer with some of the people there for a while. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, also, we got to walk through Skid Row, which allowed us to see a bunch of the people interacting and hearing stories. And there was one person we talked to who was a blind veteran, and he wanted us to guess how old he was. 
So we kept lowballing him because it feels rude to tell a stranger that they look 60 years old or whatever it was. But eventually we were able to work up and guess the right age. Uh, some of the other stuff we did is we sorted food out of the food bank. So we had to put all of the grains in one area and all the vegetables in the other. Uh, made sure all the stuff was uh, able to be used because they aren't able to use all of their donations because of the restrictions. Uh, and then in the next year, we did, went to Portland. So one of the things we did is we helped out with a public garden. And what I did was I moved wood chips from the top of the public garden down to the street so they could be taken and disposed of. So I had to move them in the wheelbarrow down this really steep and winding hill and then just stand by as the some of the girls shoveled it out of the uh, wheelbarrow and onto the street. Uh, another thing that we did is serve breakfast. So we got to help and talk out, talk to some of these people. So that was really cool. And uh, then in Colorado, we helped this church camp. And we split up into different groups. So what my group did is there was this support beam thing in the middle of their dining hall, which would have dividers in it to separate it out, but they didn't want to use those. So we had to tear up this big metal support beam uh, that's like 30 or 20 feet in the air. So we had to get on ladders and scaffolding and such. Another thing my group did is we painted picnic tables, but it kept raining. So we had to find a location where they would be dry enough to not get all the paint rained off and do several layers. And because of the rain and the weather and stuff, we weren't able to plant the trees that we paid for through our fundraising. But fortunately, the people would be able to plant them later. So they still had them. We just weren't able to help plant them. And something we did at the end is we made a fancy dinner. And it was like salads and all kinds of fancy stuff. But... Uh, we just, the leaders hosted that and served that, but we had a bunch of leftover pudding, and one of this camp's things was they kept track of the food waste, so we were really careful about making sure we didn't waste any food. So if you got full, you had to pass off your food to someone else so we wouldn't have any waste. So at the end of the week, we had like one or so pound, and then because of all of the leftover pudding, we had like 30 pounds. So a lot of us were heartbroken about all of our uh, hard work progress being wasted. Uh, but yeah, we it was a lot of fun to go on all of these mission trips and hang out with all of our friends and do all these cool activities. Good morning, everybody. My name is Walker Tagaris. Uh, I've attended uh, First United Methodist since I was three, I think, um, as long as I can remember. Um, I've loved that church. I've loved all you guys. I've loved all my uh, youth pastors and um, all my little Sunday school teachers growing up. And I have so many memories of um, UMY and uh, all the fun things we used to do. And it's just sad that we have to do this like this. Um, I just remember every year sitting in the front row watching the seniors go up and give their speeches and um, just tell about memories. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm doing this off the top of my head because I thought it'd be more meaningful. Uh, I have so many memories that I look back on and it just makes me sad to think that it's over. Some of the, my most fond memories would be um, when we went down to the Dream Center in Los Angeles and helped those that were in need. And um, when we went down to Venice Beach and we just sat on the beach and sang in front of all those people. Uh, I just remember when I was really little and I was scared to ride the bus and stuff and we get on the bus and go up to the uh, pumpkin patch. I love that and go through the corn maze and I was with all my friends. And um, it's sad to think that it's all ending and it has to be like this, but 
I'm just happy that I'm gonna be staying in this town. I'm gonna be attending uh, CBC and I will be attending church. So I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I just don't get to call myself a kid anymore. But I just wanna thank all my youth pastors and leaders and all my Sunday school teachers that I grew up with. And I just wanna thank you all because uh, you guys all had a little piece of my journey. And so um, I just wanna thank you and uh, yeah. My name is Jasmine Urban and I am here to share some of my memories from growing up up until now. Uh, as a senior, it's kind of been strange and it's been difficult, but I've learned to persevere with everything that the church has taught me and to be able to grow into a strong person. I have learned to overcome many challenges through the help of the church. I've been able to rely on everyone there and I would like to thank everyone for being there. Some of my favorite memories have been doing the things for the church and involving myself in the community, fundraising, and just getting to know everyone. The people that I've met have been some of my closest friends, and I don't think I could have made it through a lot of life challenges without them. I remember when I was little, I used to be in a sewing club, and we'd make all these projects and have little fashion shows and stuff to show off what we'd made. It was just a great experience, and it was so fun to be able to know that there are others like me who can, we all enjoy the same things, and we can be with each other and support each other through our faith. And so I'm just hoping that as I go on off into college that... I am able to take those things with me. I will always have those memories with me. I will have the people that I have with the church to be with me. And I am also happy to say that I will be attending Bushnell University in Eugene, Oregon. And I would love for prayers and support that I can make it through my freshman year without too many hiccups or bumps. So thank you everyone for your support. Well, I'm so glad that we are able to hear from uh, our seniors as they graduate and as they move on to this next stage in their life. And I hope that as a congregation, we can celebrate and rejoice in all that they have learned and all that they have grown uh, in their time with us and in their connection to the church. You know, scripture tells us uh, in, in Proverbs that we should start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. That's from Proverbs chapter 22. And I hope that we can uh, celebrate and realize that part of the way we help our children grow and become the, the people that God has called them to be is by our involvement in this community and in our ability to, to share our time, our resources, our faith, and our love with these kids um, as a way to help them understand who God is and understand their place in this kingdom of God. So I want to thank this church for supporting uh, each of these kids as they uh, have grown up with us. And uh, I want to uh, offer our blessings for them as they move into this next chapter in their lives. You know, one of the things that uh, is unusual about this time of year and all of the things that uh, are going on around us because of the, the threat of the COVID virus and having to change the way that we do things, one of the things that, that we've had to change is how we think about our summer camps. I know that for many of you watching this uh, video today, you participated as a child or maybe as an adult, as a counselor at one of our United Methodist churches like, like Lazy F or Camp Indianola or Twinlow up in Rathdrum, Idaho. And the, uh, this year, um, there's been some changes and some uncertainty about how those camps are going to happen and if they are going to happen. And so our, our camps are, are in an unusual place this year because they have a schedule of camps, but they are still kind of waiting to see what is going to happen with uh, health orders and, and all of those things and about how they're able to function. And so the camps are scheduled, but there's no guarantee that some of the camps earlier in the summer are actually going to happen. And I know that for a lot of people, they've been hesitant to um, uh, register for those camps because of just uncertainty about what this summer is going to be like. So having said that, um, we're going to have one of our, our seniors in high school share with you a little bit about what uh, her experience at camp has meant to her and how important these camps are for us. And I also want to let you know that 
um, as a way to support you all in um, being able to, to participate in camps or to encourage you to register for camps. Uh, I wanted to let you know I, I'm very happy that we have a, a fund set aside here at the church that we haven't used um, completely for a number of years. And so we're able to offer uh, a $200 campership for any kid that um, is wanting to, to head to camp this year. So if you were worried about whether or not you could uh, afford the expense of camp and maybe the uncertainty of whether that camp would happen and not want to um, uh, shell out the money for those camps, we want to be in a position to, to help you uh, make sure that your kids can go to camp and have that important experience. Also, if, if you would like to, um, if you want to uh, send the, the text, text message Kinwick first to uh, 77977, uh, you can make a donation towards our um, uh, campership fund. And when you uh, text that number, there'll be a little menu that comes up. And, and one of the options is for camperships. And you can uh, make a donation to help our kids uh, participate in camp. But I wanted to make sure that you all knew that um, as a church, we want to encourage you and encourage our kids to, uh, to be able to uh, attend the camps that can be so meaningful, um, not only in their summer, but in their life ahead. And so um, I want you to be able to hear these words from one of our seniors and her experience of years of going to camp and let you know that as a church, we want to support you and help you uh, send our kids to camp. Today, I've been asked to share some of my camp memories with y'all, as well as what camp means to me. I have been attending Twinlow Camp since I was about seven or eight years old. I still remember the first day as if it was my last. We ran around playing name games and teamwork games to get to know each other. As the years went on, I had a lot of opportunities to attend different camps at Twinlow, such as Rock and Water for high schoolers, junior high and senior high water sports, and Fish and Sail when I was younger. They have so many more camps too, such as a drama camp. During Fish and Sail, I remember being one of, the, one of two kids to be able to catch a fish while we were out on the lake on a party barge. It was a really great memory because it built my confidence. Another fond memory was when me and some of my cabin mates, along with the counselors, we took some kayaks or canoes and we went up the lake to a place called my friend's place or my friend's camp. And we spent the night under the stars roasting marshmallows and sleeping in our sleeping bags. We shared camp stories and we sang worship songs under the stars with each other. We prayed and we had lots of fun. In the morning, we woke up and we made breakfast. We brought some stuff with us and it was great. We had had like a breakfast casserole. It had eggs and sausage and bacon and it was absolutely delicious. Some other memories include going out and whitewater rafting. The first time I'd ever been whitewater rafting was thanks to Twinlow. One of the first times I also went officially rock climbing was at Twinlow. Thanks to them, I have been able to create so many fond memories and have so many firsts at, at adventures. I've never tried huckleberries before. And when we went up hiking, we picked so many huckleberries that we brought them back and we had them with ice cream late one night. Unfortunately, not every year was super easy for us to, me and my sister that is, to attend, but we have been able to make do and continue to go every single year. And I have been asked actually to work at the camp sometime in the future. And so with all the memories that I have been made and thanks to what the camp, what Twinla has done for me, I hope to see some of the little ones in the future as well and hope that they are capable of making just as many fond memories as I did when I was younger.
So friends, let me offer this benediction on a day that we gather together to celebrate and to worship God and God's presence with us. Go from this place celebrating that we serve a God who loves us. Go from here rejoicing in the Spirit's work, not only in our community, but in the lives of our children and in their lives into the future. Go from here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. As we conclude our service this morning, I would like to challenge all of you, um, graduating seniors, youth, uh, the congregation alike, to be able to say to the Lord, here I am, where would you have me serve you? I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people I will.